In this talk, I will present my CPP paper on a minimalistic verified bootstrap compiler. As the title suggests, this paper is about bootstrapping a compiler inside of an ITP. At this point, someone might say, hang on, hasn't that already been done in the KML project? Indeed it has, but KML has as, an, has as a name to produce a realistic verified compiler and as a result, some of the key ideas are obscured by clutter by, of realism. The contribution of this work is to provide a clean and clear presentation of the idea behind compiler bootstrapping inside an ITP. This, this talk has a simple structure. I'll answer the questions why, what and how. We start with the question why. Why would one bootstrap a compiler inside an ITP? To answer this, consider this scenario. Hooray! We've finished our verified compiler. Um, how do we get an executable version that can run outside of an ITP? Two ways come to mind. One can use the ITP's code extraction mechanism, or one can, one can alternatively bootstrap the compiler within the ITP. This talk will look at the second option. Why does bootstrapping help us? Well, bootstrapping results in a theorem of the following form. This executable assembly code implements the compiler. By bootstrapping a compiler inside an ITP, we arrive at a theorem containing the executable implementation of the compiler. Okay, next question is then, what? What is compiler bootstrapping exactly? Well, let's start from a compiler. A compiler is a program that transforms source code into executable code. Bootstrapping then? We say that a compiler bootstraps itself when it can generate its own low-level implementation by applying itself to its own source code. The idea can be illustrated as follows. The idea is to feed the compiler in a source code, run the compiler as normal to get an implementation of the compiler as executable code. And we want to do all of this inside an ITP with proof. The next question is then how? How can we bootstrap a compiler inside an ITP? Well, let's think of what we need. We clearly need a compiler implementation. We need semantics for source and for target languages. And we need a verified code generator. OK, so let's get started. Implementation. Here's the top level function implementing an end to end compiler. The subfunctions are Alexa that turns a string into a list of tokens, a parser that turns a list of tokens into a source program prog. Then we have a code generator, which given a source program, turns and uh, returns an assembly program. Finally, the asm to string function converts the assembly program into concrete syntax that an off the shelf assembler will understand. Moving on to the semantics. For the source semantics, we have a judgment which is to be understood as follows. Give an input called input on standard in. Program P will terminate and produce output called output on standard out. For the target semantics, we have a similar judgment with a similar meaning. Note that the subscript prog and asm indicate which semantics we are talking about. Equipped with a semantics judgment for source and target, we can state what it means for our code gen function to be correct. This theorem can be read as saying, if both source and, uh, uh, and generated assembly code terminate, then they produce exactly the same output. There are other more general ways of phrasing compiler correctness, but this simple statement will do for our purposes here. So getting back to what we need, it looks like we have all these now. Let's attempt to bootstrap the compiler. Remember, bootstrapping is applying the code generator to the compiler itself. Let's do it. At this point, someone will say, stop, the types don't make any sense. And indeed, applying the code generator directly to the compiler does not work because there is a type mismatch. So how do we get around this? Well, there's a trick. <laughs> 
Let's invent a prog represent, uh, representation of the compiler. This prog value called compiler prog needs to be such that the following holds. For any input called input, compiler prog will terminate and produce the same output as, output as the compiler function applied to input. One should view this theorem as the correctness of compiler prog. It relates compiler, the function, with compiler prog. Now we have all the parts we need. We have the correctness of compiler prog, we have the correctness of the code generator, and a definition of com the compiler as assembly code. From these, it is easy to prove the final correct uh, bootstrap theorem. As you can see, the fo this follows by modus ponens of the top two theorems on this slide. Let's have a look at what they, uh, the bootstrap theorem says. If for input, the assembly produces some output called output, then that output is the compiler function's output. In other words, the assembly implementation of the compiler, that is compiler asm, behaves like the compiler function. The next step is that we want to get our hands on the assembly code. To do this, we simply evaluate inside the ITP asm, asm tuster applied to compiler asm. An excerpt of the result of this evaluation is shown on the right hand side. Looking back at the parts that we need, we can see that a verified source code version of the compiler implementation was added to the list. We also needed evaluation of ASM to STR applied to compiler ASM. With this, the bootstrapping is done. The last item on the list limits how minimal the compiler can be. With an aim of a minimality, the source language was designed to be just large enough to conveniently express the compiler implementation. I decided on a small untype lisp where values are binary trees with natural numbers at the leaves. The code generator is then a simple uh, functional program and compiler prog was produced mostly using proof producing code synthesis. The IO parts were manually implemented and verified. I rush, I'm rushing a bit because I want to show you a demo. In the demo, we will see two versions of the compiler. One is a verified pretty, pretty printed source version and the other is the string version of the assembly version of the compiler. So here's the demo. We start by looking at the compiler as assembly code. Here it is in the file system. It is in GNU assembler syntax. I use GCC to assemble and link the assembly version of the compiler. And the result is a compiler executable. Now I show you a hello world program written in my Lisp, little Lisp language. You can see here it says hello. I can compile this hello program. This produces a file called hello.s. Again, I use GCC to assemble and link the result. And when we run the hello program, it says hello. Now let's have a look at the compiler pretty printed to source syntax. This is this file is a generated file, but it's still quite readable. At the bottom of this file, we see the top level definition of the compiler. And just as we did for the hello world program, we can also compile the compiler source. Here I'm piping the result into a file called result. And now I use diff to check if there's any difference between the result and the original compiler asm, and there isn't. And that concludes this talk. I'm happy to take questions.